Hey everyone, this is Justin Nathan, and this is my first little after the theater review. I just got back from seeing Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I suppose I should start by giving my brief thoughts on the first four. Now, while people view Raiders of the Lost Ark as some kind of cinematic masterpiece, I personally found Raiders to be good, but not great. Temple Doom, I thought, was fairly fine, despite it being flawed, and holy dear God, it was never flawed. I don't remember much from Last Crusade, and Crystal Skull, I'm not adding Kingdom in there, was really bad. So, how does this one stack up? It was actually a lot better than both Temple of Doom and Crystal Skull. In fact, it was actually really good, but even if it is a tab, even if it's not perfect, but then again, no movie is. So, and let's, let's just start with, okay, so, first of all, the plot is not as crazy as those two movies I mentioned, Crystal Skull and Temple Doom. It's actually, for the most part, pretty easy to follow, and it feels more like a straightforward adventure, pretty much similar to Raiders of the Lost Ark, and, to a lesser extent, another Spielberg movie, Tin Adventures of Tintin, which is a bit similar, but anyways, uh, I did find some of the character's motivations to be a bit hard to follow, but maybe that's just me, because it was still mostly enjoyable. Really, the only the biggest problem I have with the story is that the movie is too long, and there are some sequences that I feel could have been cut out. I'm not going to tell you which ones they were, because I'm trying to keep this as spoiler-free as possible. Uh, let's see, what else? Okay, characters, well, characters are still really enjoyable. I mean, these, I like the new additions to the, this cast, I mean... I, in fact, I'm just gonna. I actually enjoy people who are Bridges' female companion character way more than the female companions in Temple of Doom and Last Crusade. Because if I remember correctly, the female companion in Temple of Doom, Willie Scott, was annoying as fuck, and the female companion in Last Crusade, Elsa, was an idiot. And Crystal Skull had the same female companion as Raiders, and I don't remember how I felt about marrying Ravenwood. Only downside about the characters that, well, I don't really remember the kid character very well, though he's certainly a better kid companion than Short Round or Mutt Williams. I'll give them, I'll give him that. Uh, also, like, I felt that the villain didn't get much to do the first time around, but that thing got better as the movie went along. Okay, action sequences. Thankfully, the action sequences are a, a, a huge upgrade from the CGI eye source from Crystal Skull. Jane Mangold actually did a really good job handling the action sequences and recapturing the magic that was in the Raiders of the Lost Ark. So, and, I, and props to him for that, seeing as how the only other movie from him that was, the only other movies I've seen from him were, were the Wolverine and Logan. Maybe, anyways, uh, I mean, I, there were still a couple moments where I couldn't tell what was going on due to the fast pacing, but they were still handled very well, and, and again, I like how there was less CG than usual and relied more on practical effects like they did in the old movies. That's a plus. Acting, acting. Again, acting is very solid. Harry, Harrison Ford is still pretty good as Indiana Jones, which is surprising given that he's a bit of a, a grump these days. He's actually a total grump these days. <laughs> Baby Wall Bridge is, all, is also pretty fun as the female companion, which is which again is surprising because I normally don't really care that much for her. And Mads Mikkelsen is pretty fun, fun as the villain, but then again, he's Mads Mikkelsen, so that's not really surprising to be completely honest. Uh, um, who else? Who else? Uh, oh, and Tony Banderas is also in it. I... But I don't. I don't think he got too much to do. But uh, but he he's Antonio Banderas. I can't get mad at him. He 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 can make anything sound good in my opinion. Um, what else is there? Uh, lighting. Uh, oh, lighting was fine. Better than Crystal Skull at least. Um, uh, what else? Uh, music. Music is also really good. But then again, that might have to do with the fact that it is John Williams and hearing some of the classic Indiana Jones themes. That that's a plus. Oh, and speaking of which. It's also pretty good that they didn't rely too much on nostalgia for this, like they normally would when we came out a long time after this. So, I can't think of much else to say. So, in, at the end of it all, can I recommend uh, Indy Jones Without Destiny? Yes, actually. It's 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 worth seeing. It's actually a, a big improvement over Temple of Doom and Crystal Skull. As for how it compares to Raiders of the Lost Ark and the Last Crusade, I might think about that. Though, in hindsight, it probably is better than the latter. Uh... Yeah, yeah, it's worth seeing. It's not exactly something that I would add to my Blu-ray collection, but still overall enjoyable. Um, well, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. I'm Justin Nathan, and I'll see you soon.